Hello everyone and welcome to Finding Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. My name is Amanda Bizet. I'm a reference and instruction librarian and you're welcome to follow up with me directly if you do have any questions related to today's workshop. You can reach me at abizet at ncu.edu. And to get started, we're going to navigate to the research process guide under research help. I always like to start here to show you what guide within this uh, larger research process guide corresponds to the content we're presenting today. So if we scroll down on our screen here, you'll see this section called resources for a literature review. And within this guide, we do have our individual guide on systematic reviews and meta-analyses. So for the first part of this workshop, we're simply going to talk about what they are and why they may be important to research and more specifically doctoral research. Um, so as we start looking within our guide, the first thing we see here is what's called the evidence pyramid. And we see that at the very top of this pyramid, we have a section that says systematic reviews. And this will also include the meta-analyses, which we'll talk about as well. But what you can see from this image is that they are situated at the top of the evidence pyramid. And they're considered the highest quality evidence on a research topic because their study design reduces biases, uh, bias and produces more reliable findings. The other thing that we notice from this pyramid is that the um, amount of literature as we go up, the um, amount of literature decreases. So you can see like this background information and expert opinion at the bottom of the period, at, at the bottom of the pyramid, there is a ton of that. Um, you can see just by the area that there is a lot of information. But as we go up, there are less and less systematic reviews and meta analyses. However, as we go up, that quality of evidence uh, increases as well. So what is a systematic review? We talk about that here, um, systematic reviews and meta-analyses, but I'm also going to pop over to our SAGE research methods database. Within the SAGE research methods database, if you're not familiar with this, it's a great resource, especially for doctoral students, because it uh, provides everything you need to know about research methods and design. Uh, one of their tools here un under research tools is the project planner, and that's where I am right now. I'm in a section called data collection, and they have a very succinct summary here within data collection about uh, what is a systematic review? So in looking at our screen now, we see that definition that a systematic review is a literature review focused on a research question that tries to identify, appraise, select, and synthesize all high quality research evidence relevant to that question. So in other words, uh, an author of a systematic review is not conducting their own original research they are not designing uh, a research study using instruments to collect data. They are looking at previously published scholarly articles that presented research studies, and they are bringing them all together in one place using a set criteria to select uh, those particular studies and then synthesizing that information into this exhaustive summary. Um, and so as we scroll down, we also see this statement, um, systematic reviews often, but not always, use statistical techniques called meta-analysis to combine results of the eligible studies, or at least use scoring of the levels of evidence depending on the methodology used. So when we think about a, a meta-analysis, that sort of takes it a step further um, to provide that statistical evidence based on what other researchers have done with their own studies. A systematic review uses an objective and transparent approach for research synthesis, 
with the aim of minimizing bias since they are considering so many different studies. While many systematic reviews are based on an explicit quantitative meta-analysis of available data, there are also qualitative reviews which adhere to the standards for gathering, analyzing, and reporting evidence. So we can see here just from the simple definitions of systematic reviews and meta-analyses that um, they are quality resources, and we've seen that, that they lie at the top of that evidence pyramid, but more specifically, why would we want to use these for our own research? Well, first and foremost, systematic reviews and meta-analyses will typically have extensive references to reviewed articles. Uh, sometimes over a hundred studies are summarized versus a regular scholarly journal article where original research was done, they may have 20 to 30 references. In addition to the uh, reviewed articles, there are typically additional references that did not qualify for the review and the analysis. And we're going to see some examples of that, but the bottom line here is that if you find a systematic review or a meta-analysis related to your research topic, this is typically a gold mine of additional sources on that topic. So that's probably the first benefit. Additionally, systematic reviews and meta-analyses have to discuss, or um, maybe not have to is the right word, but they typically will discuss how they search for the articles for in inclusion in their study, which means they're going to tell you search terms and techniques and databases that they use to search for this information, which is also very helpful to you, right? It's like a prescription to how, how to search for this topic in a library or in uh, research databases. So those are really uh, the two main reasons for using systematic reviews and meta-analyses. It can really open up a whole world of articles that you did not necessarily find with your keyword searches in the library. So let's take a couple, of, um, let's take a look at a couple of examples here, um, just so you can see how they are sort of formatted and laid out. And so here we have one on information literacy instruction for undergraduates. It's a systematic review. It's relatively recent um, from 2018. And as we scroll down, um, we're going to start seeing very um, typical parts of scholarly articles. So we see our introduction, we see a literature review. Sometimes the literature reviews are very brief here because um, they are already going to discuss all of these articles and their analysis, um, so they may have more of a brief literature review. They talk about their research analysis or their research methods, and so um, here is one area where they have identified certain databases that they used. Um, in this particular systematic review, they used um, information science and technology abstracts, library literature databases, and EBSCOhost databases, and they provide the search terms that they actually used. They also talk about what sort of results they got and probably if they used any particular limiters. Then they outline the particular um, criteria for inclusion and exclusion of the articles that they are going to review. And so uh, then they talk about their findings, as it relates to their research questions. And uh, this is pretty extensive. So we'll keep scrolling down just so you can see how the actual articles are identified. And this is certainly going to vary by article and by publisher, but here we see that um, their Appendix A is the items reviewed by category. So they have um, a, a total of 102 articles that were included in the formal review. So just like we said earlier, these are very extensive. And um, you could be scrolling through and say, oh yes, I have this Brooks article, I have this Farmer article, but you know what? I have never heard of these um, articles. So it really can uh, be a great way to 
uh, find that additional information. Not all of them may be broken down into category, but in this case, that this one is focusing on theory, this one is focusing on practice, and uh, then beyond that, we have notes which include the additional resources that are referenced throughout that paper, uh, but they were not the sources used for that systematic review. Here's another example. Um, this one happens to be a, a, another systematic review on uh, library instruction for graduate students, and this is also a meta-analysis study. Um, so again, we're seeing very similar or very um, familiar sections of scholarly journal articles. Um, and then we'll scroll down. We see um, the research questions for the systematic review and then separate ones for the meta-analysis. Those may or may not differ um, for depending on the study that you're looking at. And then let's scroll down. Um, we see some tables that identify some of the articles used, but typically um, the entire list of articles will be included in a, an appendix. So let's scroll down and see if that's the case with this particular article as well. Okay, so we have limitations of the study. Again, um, the implications for practice, the limitations, uh, those really may make some good suggestions for future research. So if you're still looking for that statement um, for your own dissertation of another researcher re um, recommending future research in an area, these are sections to take a look at. But I'm going to keep looking. Here we have our references. So this would be um, the regular references used throughout the uh, article itself, um, but then we have uh, Appendix A, that's our search strategy. So this is really awesome because it identifies the particular databases that were used. Some of them may not be um, available through the NCU library, and if that's the case, certainly contact the library and see where else we might recommend. But in this case, Medline, Senol, Eric are all things that you have access to. They outline their specific search terms. So honestly, if this is a search related to your topic, you may be able to copy and paste these terms um, depending on which resource you're looking at. Um, they also looked at dissertations in this particular um, review. So um, that's something we're also going to talk about in a bit. So a lot of great information here, and now here are the studies that were included in this systematic review. So they're not numbered. Uh, they're not numbered here, and they're, it's not extensive as our previous example where we saw that there were um, over a hundred uh, included. But here it's much smaller. Um, and then they do have a note here that some of them were not included in the meta-analysis. So just pay attention to things like that. And so I mentioned also that um, dissertations are used, um, or rather I mentioned that dissertations may also take a systematic review approach. And so therefore I wanted to show you an example of a dissertation that um, used a systematic review approach to their study. So let me get rid of this part. Actually, let me open up the PDF. That'll be better. So then we can take a look at that. So um, this one happens to be a dissertation from, let's see. Actually, this is not a dissertation. I apologize. We'll look for that in a moment. Um, this is actually just one additional example of a systematic review. So since I went through the trouble to open it up, let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at the formatting here as well. Because the more familiar you get with um, you know, the format of publications, the easier it is to sort of work your way through it. So there's their findings. Um, we have this is this is handy as well because this particular uh, chart here identifies uh, journals that were appropriate for this particular research topic. So um, that can also be a way to help you with your own research. And then we'll keep scrolling down. 
we'll just go straight to the bottom and see if we can get beyond the references to any appendices that are used. Okay, so here's our appendix with the, I, I assume this is the, the resources included in the systematic review. Um, so we would have to double check the narrative to see if they reference this appendix, but clearly they have numbered these articles. It is to just 23 in this case, and I think those are the ones that were used in that systematic review. Okay, so I will close that. Um, so I know I mentioned dissertations earlier. Um, we're actually going to get to that. I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's pop back to our guide itself um, and then talk about finding systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And we'll, we'll look at dissertations as part of that. Um, some things to consider here. Since there are far fewer systematic reviews and meta-analyses than most other types of research, right, because we know that from looking at that evidence pyramid, uh, you will often need to broaden your search terms when searching in the library's database or online for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. So in other words, um, in our example, we were pulling up some information literacy instruction related uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses. So it may be too specific for me to look for information literacy instruction in academic libraries for online doctoral students. Um, you know, that could be way too specific. I may need to take a step back and just look for information literacy um, for students in higher education, for example. But that's just an example. Um, you just consider broadening your search when looking more specifically for this type of information. Another thing uh, to keep in mind is that not all systematic reviews are peer reviewed. So therefore, when we talk about searching in something like a Roadrunner search or any of our other library databases, we probably do not want to use our scholarly and peer review journal limiter while searching for systematic reviews and meta analyses, because again, not all of them are peer reviewed. Since that is the case, we have to be a little bit more evaluative um, or careful when we um, when we review this type of information, when we um, critique it or um, assess it for use in our own research. So just a reminder, um, within our research process guide, we also have that guide on evaluating information, as well as sort of that supplemental guide on website evaluation. So that's a great starting point in terms of looking at criteria for evaluation to determine if something is of a high quality and should be used in your research. Additionally, on this guide, we have some um, systematic review appraisal tools, um, and this can also help with uh, thinking about ways to uh, approach looking at systematic reviews. And finally, I want to mention that um, when you find a systematic review or meta-analysis, again, it could be a gold mine of studies. Right, but your dissertation will want to see and know that you are not simply regurgitating synthesis found in a systematic review, right? Since they're doing a pretty exhaustive review of all available literature that meet their criteria on that uh, particular topic, you know, you have to make sure you're not just, you know, following their same sort of synthesis of that research. So definitely, um, you know, check with your chair to make sure it is okay to cite systematic reviews and meta-analysis in your research. It should be because they are at the top of this uh, evidence pyramid, but again, just uh, they, they will want to make sure that you're not um, just sort of reusing the synthesis that was already done by one of these researchers that produced the uh, review or the meta-analysis study. So now that we've talked really about 
what systematic reviews and meta-analyses are and uh, why they're important and some things to consider when searching, let's actually jump into searching for these resources within the NCU library. So the first thing we're going to do is start out with our Roadrunner search here. And remember when using Roadrunner search or any other resource, when looking for systematic reviews, we probably will want to leave that scholarly and peer reviewed journal limiter off. So I'm just going to go directly into our advanced search. And as, you, uh, as we look through our examples of systematic reviews, you may have noticed that they often use systematic review in the article title, right? Um, and so that is our sort of ticket to finding that information within the library. We can use that as a phrase search in the title of the document. Now, there may be some systematic reviews that don't announce that they are such within the title, but that would be very rare. So let's go ahead and say that we want systematic review. We definitely want that as an exact phrase, so we want to use those quotation marks. So we have systematic review, and then we can put in our topic keywords. Now, for this particular search, I'm going to be pretty um, broad here, so I'm just going to look for pain management. Uh, but you could maybe get a little bit more specific, remembering that we are going to search much broader when, when limiting our scope to these reviews and meta-analyses. And I'm going to put both of these things in the title of the document. So I'll choose TI title, and then I'm going to press search. Okay, and we do have 1,700 results. Now, we're not looking for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of results, which sometimes happens when we are searching by keyword in Roadrunner. Um, but when it comes to systematic reviews, we really want them to be on topic for us. So since we have 1,700 at this point, which is a little bit, um, a little bit broad, um, we can maybe do things to narrow things down. So let's say we're looking at um, nursing here and we um, want to make sure that the articles deal with nursing in some way. I'll, I'll add that in and now I have a much more reasonable set of results, which is 435. So now I see that my first systematic review is from uh, 2022, which is great. And it's student nurses pain knowledge and attitudes towards pain management over the last 20 years, a systematic review. So that one does not have a meta-analysis, it has a systematic review. And let's take a look at it quickly, just as an example to see you know, what, what can we find here? If this is our research topic, how can this help us? Uh, certainly the information that is provided in this review is going to be valuable, but also their um, references and these studies included can be super helpful. So let's go ahead and view this PDF just quickly, and then we'll jump back into our searching. Okay, so I'll hide that and I'll scroll down and I'm just going to go straight to the bottom in this case while it's loading. So we have here our references. Let's see here. And then now we have this table that includes the uh, literature review studies on pain management knowledge and attitudes of undergraduate nursing students. So um, in this case, this isn't one that has hundreds included, but um, it certainly looks like quality, quality evidence on that particular topic. So I'm going to X out of those. The other thing that we're doing here that I wanted to mention is this search is set up only to look for systematic reviews in the title. If we also wanted to offer the choice of meta-analysis, we can type that in here as well. So I'm just going to type 
meta-analysis. And what this search is, is called is a nested search or nesting, where we're looking for um, one term or another term. We're essentially offering the database a choice. Please choose one of these, systematic review or meta-analysis, but either one of them has to be in the title. And the way we set that up is we use parentheses around the group of words and connect them with the ORs. And I could continue going on with this if I wanted to offer additional choices. But I'm going to update my search. This may or may not go up. Um, so let's see what happens. So it went up by about 50 or so. So that means that uh, the 50 that exist um, the new articles seem to have conducted a meta-analysis without their own original systematic review. So um, that pulled in additional articles though, so that technique I do recommend when looking for this type of information. So now that we have seen how to find systematic reviews in Roadrunner Search, let's pop over to and actually let's let's not let's do an a, a different um, sort of discipline so i'm going to leave systematic review or meta-analysis in the title but i'm going to change my topic so let's say our next topic of interest is customer relationship management so we'll pop over to business So I'll try to type that in without typos, and then I'm going to update my search. Notice that customer relationship management is a phrase, so of course I have my quotation marks there. And now look at our results. If all, all of my um, spelling is correct, which it look, appears to be, um, I only have four results total. So let's think about this. Um, why did we have so much more research for pain management? The reason for that is systematic reviews originated in the medical field. So because of that, you can expect to see the majority of articles related to medicine, nursing, and healthcare. And that may have expanded um, also to psychology and marriage and family science as well. So you're going to find a lot less in the other social sciences. Um, but if you are a student in a different discipline, a non-health related discipline, I do recommend Roadrunner as your starting point for finding systematic reviews and meta-analysis because Roadrunner is searching across our various library databases. It is the best and most comprehensive uh, search for this information. So we could also try um, a... a um, education topic, so I'm just going to try educational leadership. I'll use that as an exact phrase as well, and we'll see what sort of results we get here. So that was a little bit higher than the CRM. Um, so now we have 37 results here. So if you are studying educational leadership in some capacity, this would be a good search for looking at systematic reviews related to that field. So I just wanted to demonstrate a couple of different searches and how that sort of contrasts with uh, a health-related discipline. All right, so let's now return back to our systematic reviews and meta-analysis guide and scroll down because here we actually have a section or a box uh, that says databases. So now, now we are identifying additional library databases that do provide systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And so I'm not going to go into each of these during the course of this uh, presentation, but we will pop into a couple of these, starting with uh, AP Psych Info. So while we can tell from the name of this database that it is related to uh, psychology, it is also going to touch on uh, marriage and family science, health fields, um, as well as a little bit of overlap into other social science areas as well, particularly education so and business as well. So, um, you know, if you are a student in another discipline, it's always worth your while just to try it out. 
Um, if you're not getting results, then maybe move on to something else or contact the library to see what resources we more specifically recommend for your topic. Okay, and the reason why I like to show APA Psych Info is because on our advanced search page here, um, we have a lot of features that you do not see in our Roadrunner search. One of those features is a way to limit your results to systematic reviews. Um, so what we can do is scroll down to this box called methodology. And as we scroll down, we will see that there is a um, option for systematic review. Now you could choose a regular literature review, um, which is going to be a literature review similar to what you would see in a scholarly article or in a dissertation, but without that um, actual uh, systematic review where you're um, being selective, setting criteria for inclusion, and then um, essentially evaluating all of that information as it relates to your research question. So it's a little bit different than a, a literature review where you're just you know, bringing together articles based on a certain topic. The systematic review, again, is answering those research questions. Um, so we could choose systematic review. Uh, we can also choose meta-analysis and meta-synthesis as well. So let's scroll down and then um, now let's actually scroll back up to the top of the screen uh, because we do need to enter some search terms. So let's say that we are interested in stress, somehow uh, stress management, treatment for stress and anxiety, um, all of that. So I'm going to say that I want stress in the title of my, um, of my systematic review or my meta-analysis. And I'm going to press search. So we have our results and we have over a thousand results, which is a little bit high. Uh, so you perhaps may want to narrow that down by adding additional search terms. Another option uh, would be to come down here and look at the subjects assigned to your set of results. So um, from our results, uh, 40 of them focus more so on trauma. So maybe that is actually what you're interested in stress as it relates to trauma. And now we have just 40 results here. Our results in Roadrunner Search in EBSCOhost databases like APA PsycInfo, they are defaulting to a relevancy sort, which you can see here, but you can always change that to the date newest if you like. So we can see what the newest uh, systematic review on stress related to trauma is. We do have a 2022 article, Work-Related Traumatic Stress for First Responder Families, a Systematic Review of the Literature. And right away, we can get to that PDF full text. Um, scrolling down, we see that this is a meta-analytic um, systematic review. So that's another phrase that you could search for um, instead of just systematic review. But in this case, since we were in psych info, instead of using the search term systematic review or meta-analysis in the search, we use that specialized limiter on that advanced search screen. Now, there are other APA, or rather not APA, there are other EBSCOhost databases that do offer um, that sort of limiter as well. One of them is CINAHL. And so we can access them from our databases box here. But I wanted to show you that if you're already within an EBSCOhost database, you can click Choose Database to either change your database that you're in or to search um, some at the same time. But I'm just going to change from AP Psych uh, info to Medline Complete, and I'm going to click OK, just to show you that Medline Complete also has a systematic reviews limiter. In the case of Medline Complete, we can find that by going down to the publication type. So if we scroll down here, let me keep going. Okay, we do have systematic review. Now, 
it has retained my search terms from the other APA or the other EBSCO database from APA Psych Info. So if I want to change that, I can change that. If I want to leave that there, I can see, you know, what does Medline have to offer about stress um, in the title of those systematic reviews? And so you can see already that these are more medical related. If I still wanted to sort of um, narrow that down, I can take a look at these uh, major headings uh, to see if there is something, you know, maybe I'm more interested in depression and I want to limit my results to that. Now I can see a financial stress and depression in adults, a systematic review, also very, very recent, and I'm able to get to that full text. Now remember, if you uh, come across a systematic review or a meta-analysis study that you really want to take a look at and we do not have the full text, you can certainly request that through our interlibrary loan system. I'm going to click on this one as an example just to see if we do have it. Um, but when we click on that, um, I'll go back, when we click on our 360 link to full text, that's when you don't know what the outcome will be. Maybe we have it, maybe we don't. In this case, we do not. And this is where we would proceed to place that interlibrary loan request. So I'm going to click there. If you have not uh, used the interlibrary loan system before, you are going to click set reset password. I'm just going to go ahead and sign in and then show you how quick and simple it would be to place that interlibrary loan request because it is going to pre-populate all of that information for you about that systematic review. In this case, um, a systematic review on a vegetarian diet. And then uh, the only thing I need to do here is put which course I'm currently enrolled in. Uh, that's the only other required field if you've entered in uh, and it's populated that information and then you'll submit that request. So certainly contact the library if you have any questions about interlibrary loan or obtaining an article that we do not have. Okay, so Medline Complete was another one of those databases that have that specialized uh, filter or um, field that you can use, and CINAHL is another one. CINAHL is the Cumulative Index to Nursing and Allied Health Literature. So this one's a little bit more nursing related, um, but definitely uh, feel free to give that one a try if you are in the health field as well. I'm just going to stick with our same search terms here. That one we can see that we had, um, let's see. Let me go back. I did not actually go to the event search and, and select the limiter, so let me do that now. So let me scroll down on CINAHL. I kind of got caught up telling you what it actually was, right? So now we can see uh, that we have a publication type box here. As we scroll down, we're looking for that systematic review. So I see meta-analysis and meta-synthesis. If I want to use both of them, I can use my control button on my keyboard. And then I'll scroll down and choose systematic review as well. Um, my search terms are there. Now let's update this search. So about a thousand results here. Um, again, if you're looking more specifically at something like depression, feel free to type that in or take a look and see what those subjects uh, are there. And I do see depression here and we can limit those systematic reviews. So you may see some overlap from database to database, but there, were, there will certainly be new content there as well. So those were the EBSCOhost databases that I wanted to uh, demonstrate as it relates to finding systematic reviews. So I'm going to close that and go back to our guide here. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the Cochrane Library. This is a very unique database because this is a collection of six actually databases that contain different types of high quality independent evidence to inform healthcare decision making. Um, so it is focused on healthcare. But let me pop into Cochrane Reviews, and then we'll do a quick search here. Um, we can either, let me let load, and then we'll talk about our options here. We have at the very top right, oh, let me accept cookies as well. 
At the very top right, that's where you'll see the basic search box. Otherwise, they do have um, a page here that you can navigate and browse by topic, but if you'd like to search, you can search in the upper right. So I'm just going to say um, pain management here, and I'll put that in quotes. Most library databases you can use the quotation marks with. Um, and then you can also use that in Google. And so on our results here, we have a couple of, well, a few different tabs. We have our Cochrane reviews. So these are systematic reviews. We also have protocols. Protocols describe the proposed approach for a systematic review. So protocols are what comes before the systematic review. And then we have additional um, information here, clinical trials, editorials, etc. Um, but if you're looking for those reviews, you can take a look here and they're sorted by relevancy. So if I wanted the newest first, I could also sort by that here. So pay management for people with dementia and nursing homes. Uh, and we have, of course, on the left-hand side, ways to narrow that down as well. I'm going to click Show More for all of the topics. And then maybe I'll just say, well, I'm looking more at mental health. And then um, there are my results there, including my protocols. Okay. So heading back to our guide here, we also see that there are um, systematic reviews held in our Ovid um, or Ovid nursing database. So again, this is focused primarily on nursing, uh, but they do have filters there that you can use to limit your search to meta-analysis and systematic reviews. PubMed is one that you can use open access online um, to limit your results. So you're going to do a search first and then uh, limit your results to meta-analysis and systematic reviews. We've already talked about Roadrunner Search. The last one that I want to pop in today is Web of Knowledge. Web of Knowledge is not 100% full text database. It's primarily um, just containing abstracts um, of scholarly research articles in the social sciences. But because there is so much else going on with Web of Knowledge, it's a really excellent database to expand the amount of research available to you. So I'm going to go into Web of Knowledge. Unfortunately, there is no advanced search screen that allows you to um, filter your results to just systematic reviews or meta-analysis. Instead, you'll want to use that as a search term, which we we show here on the screen. So just like we did in Roadrunner Search, we're going to use systematic review as one of our search terms here. So I'm going to close out of this stuff. Um, it's uh, coming up with a basic search here. I can leave it as all fields, or if I wanted to change it to the title, I can do that. So I'm going to say uh, in the title, I want systematic review. And I'm going to add a row here. And then also in the title, I would like to find um, public health. OK, so we'll see what comes up in the search. OK, so I have just 189 results here, which again is fine. We're not looking for thousands of systematic reviews. We're not going to work our way through thousands. So this is a pretty great um, set of results. Now, what makes Web of Science, one of the things that makes Web of Science super valuable is that we can actually sort our results based on the number of citations. And what I mean by that is when we look to the right and we see 44 citations, that means that since 2008, when this article was published, 44 other researchers have cited this article and incorporated it into their own research. The same with the one underneath, 46 other researchers have cited it since September 2018. So. Um, one of the reasons why that's important is that it sort of gives you a gauge of the of how 
important the article is within that field, right? So um, 46 researchers since 2018 have thought that this was important. So um, this one's gaining a lot more traction than this one above from 10 years prior. But what you can do here is you can actually sort your number of results or sort your results list by the time cited, meaning you can see the most heavily cited, most most frequently cited article at the top of your screen. So you do that right here. You can go to the sort by citations highest first. And now we see that um, our first result on health literacy and public health has been cited over 1700 times since publication in 2012. So this article is super important if that is uh, your particular research topic. Um, and then from there, we see that it goes down. This one has 314 citations and 295. Now also, while we're here, we can look at those citing articles. You know, obviously we want to try to find this full text article, which we can do with this article linker or this free link here. We want that publication, you know, in this example. But in addition to that, we can look at these citing articles. So it says 1,771. Uh, that dropped us down to just 1,276 when we got to this page. That is because we don't subscribe to all of the indexes within Web of Science. So there is variation there. But we still have quite a list of resources. And we can either search within our results or start looking at our results or use the limiters on the left-hand side. But also what makes Web of Science super unique is the other tools for ana analyzed results and citation reports. So we'll start with analyzed results. And I'm just going to go through this quickly. And I will recommend our full-length workshop on Web of Knowledge, Web of Science, which is called Am I Done Yet? A Deep Dive into Finding More Research with Web of Knowledge. I think that's the title. <laughs> um, but I'll show you where to find that as well once we wrap this up. So we have um, our 1,276 citing articles. Right now, they are breaking those down by Web of Science categories, which are like subjects. So if you want to see, well, oh, I have 131 that focus on policy versus there's 46 that um, focus on library science, uh, 97 focus on nursing, I can look at those particular records. I can also change that. So if I wanted to see what authors are really writing about this topic, and it appears that Sorensen is doing that, right? Uh, followed by Ocon and, and others. So that's a good way to identify prominent researchers in that field. There's one other category here you may use frequently, and that is called research areas. This is very similar to the Web of Science categories that we saw at the beginning, which are essentially subject terms, just another way to break down that uh, information. And then um, at the bottom, you will see um, all of those research areas, and you can pick and choose which ones you're interested in. Um, Again, this is just scanning, like skimming the surface. So if you're interested in learning more, again, I'll show you where that workshop is. Um, and then you can also create a citation report, which is another really great feature here in Web of Knowledge. If I click on that, it's going to bring me to the citation report screen. And so we knew already there were 1,276 citing publications, but we also, those combined, those 1,276 have been cited 10,000 times, over 10,000 times. And then without self-citations, over 9,000 times. So this is a way to sort of jump to a third level of research related to your topic. Uh, you can also scroll down and look at a chart to see where the, um, where the publications lie over time. And then as we scroll down to the bottom, it's going to break apart each uh, citing article and tell you how many times they've been cited per year. So if you're like, oh, I've really done my research already. I'm just trying to find the most up to date. You can take a look at those 2022 articles. So um, to find out more about using Web of Science, not only for finding systematic reviews, but really any research 
um, article, you can go to our li live library events page to see if that workshop is coming up. So let me just scroll down quickly and see if one is coming up now. And it is called, Am I Done? A Deep Dive into Finding More Research with Web of Knowledge. So you can definitely register for an upcoming session of that. Okay, heading back to our systematic reviews and meta-analysis guide. We're about to wrap up here, um, but I do want to talk um, briefly about the additional resources. We have journals here that you can take a look at websites, articles and books, and additional tutorials and guides. I do want to point out the Campbell Systematic Reviews. This is a bi-monthly peer-reviewed publication which follows structured guidelines and standards for summarizing the international research evidence. Um, and this does go into many different um, disciplines as well. Uh, social welfare, disability, education, crime, justice, training, knowledge, translation, um, a lot, business and management. So this is a peer-reviewed journal that publishes systematic reviews, evidence and gap maps, and methods research papers. So here we have a search box at the top of the screen. When we click on that, um, we can see that we are searching this journal. And so just as an example, I'm going to uh, search for stress again. Oops, let me go back. And notice that I'm not doing anything fancy here. I don't need to use the term systematic review or meta-analysis because we're already searching within those. I just used the word stress. I didn't specify it being the title because, again, we're very narrow to begin with. We're within a certain journal that, po that publishes systematic reviews. And here I can see as I'm scrolling down that some of them um, are systematic reviews. This one says updated systematic review. You may also see protocols, uh, just like we saw earlier in the Cochrane Library. Just a reminder that these describe the proposed approach to a systematic review. Um, so all of that can be accessed here. Um, and most of them are open access available um, to you through this Wiley Online Library subscription. Again, if you see anything that you're not able to access, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Now, the last thing I'll just quickly demonstrate before we wrap up, I did want to mention that um, dissertations can be um, found by going to Find Dissertations. And then we can go to either our ProQuest Dissertations and Theses at North Central University Database or our ProQuest Dissertations and Theses Global Database. I'll quickly pop into ProQuest Dissertations and Theses at North Central. And I'm just going to say I'm interested in any dissertation that has systematic review in the title of that dissertation. And this would be um, Again, a way to find related, oh, I had a typo, systematic, let me fix this. Okay, systematic review in the title of the dissertation. Again, this would be a great way to find other students' uh, literature that they've gathered on your available research topic. In this case, um, we only got eight results, that's okay. I just wanted to show you that some students at North Central University may have done a systematic review as their um, research design for their dissertation. And so this would also be a way to take a look at those to see how they did that systematic review. Um, and so if that is an appropriate research method for your dissertation, that is something you will want to talk to your chair about. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly demonstrate how you could find that. You could also look at the global version to look at um, systematic review dissertations from all over the world. And you don't necessarily need that in the title. You know, maybe a student um, 
doesn't put that in the title of their dissertation, but they mention in the abstract that they've done a systematic review. And so in that case, we increase their results to 15 articles within North Central, or 15 dissertations done by North Central University students. And so I know that was a lot of information on finding systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Um, please don't hesitate to follow up. If you do have any questions, we're certainly happy to help.